Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my research area, sign language technology, which sits at the interface of natural language processing and computer vision. Almost half a billion people alive today live with hearing loss to some degree and therefore belong to the diverse deaf and hard of hearing or DHH community. 70 million people or so of these people communicate in one of over 400 attested sign languages. Let's first debunk some commonly held misconceptions about sign languages. Sign languages are fully fledged languages with their own grammar and that display socio-cultural variation among users. They're commonly named for the country they are signed in, such as Spanish or French sign language, which may lead to the belief that they are a sign version of a spoken language. This is not the case. American Sign Language and British Sign Language have little grammatical resemblance to English or each other, as shown in this clip. Here we see that while the mouthings are similar, hand shape, orientation and trajectories all differ. Creating sign language technology applications presents a unique challenge. Firstly, sign language machine translation has only existed for 20 years, while machine translation for spoken languages has been discussed since the advent of computing in the 1950s. From a practical perspective, the problems grow from here. There is no standardised written form for sign languages, and signs can be produced simultaneously. Moreover, this non-linear data appears in both video and text format. There is also a very limited amount of data for use in sign language machine learning applications. The largest annotated sign language dataset contains 31,000 parallel sentences, while for even low resource spoken languages there can be millions of parallel sentences, orders of magnitude higher. Because of a lack of written representation, we use glosses, a lexeme-based representation that is taken from a spoken language. However, these are seen as suboptimal as they can miss the more fine-grained grammatical and semantic meaning included in real-world signs. My first research question investigates injecting features into these glosses to be used as inputs to neural translation models between signed and spoken languages, and whether this improves performance compared to glosses alone. I also want to answer the question whether glosses are required at all in sign language translation, or whether removing this intermediate step and going from video to text is more effective. Finally, I plan to research the best methods of collecting desperately needed data for use in sign language technology, then conduct data collection myself. What does this all mean in practice? Here's an example of sign to spoken language translation pipeline. We're focusing on the gloss to text part here and vice versa. If we inject linguistic features such as part of speech into our neural translation models like so, can we improve the connections made in our sequence-to-sequence -sequence transformer models between sign gloss and spoken language text in translation? From preliminary results in German and Spanish sign language experiments, it appears like we can. We have already seen modest improvements by using these features in most text-to-gloss and gloss-to-text scenarios, and further improvements can be made with both fine-tuning and other augmentation methods. Right now, I'm continuing to conduct experiments on this data augmentation method, among others such as back translations, as well as setting about answering my other research questions. Stay tuned.